<coughs> Hello. So a bit, uh, bit of a jump in the scenery here <laughs> to something completely different. Uh, I'm going to talk about primitive collections in EF Core 8. So my name is uh, Halsten Brötan, and I work for a consultancy firm called Novanet, based here in Oslo, focusing on .NET and Azure. Uh, and this is my third time speaking at NDC, so uh, I think that's pretty cool. So I'm just going to jump straight into uh, a basic example. So we have a, a person with uh, multiple phone numbers. So I created this uh, class a person with an ID, a name, and a list of strings representing the phone numbers. So how do we model this to the database? Well, the traditional approach would be to create a new table and have a foreign key to the person table and then add an entry for each phone number. But that might seem a bit too much, uh, especially if you have uh, other stuff like email addresses, uh, and then it gets to be uh, even more tables. So a more pragmatic approach would be to take this list of strings and create a custom converter and convert it to, uh, to a one string, for instance, a comma-separated string, or just serialize it to JSON. <coughs> and then in EF Core 8 uh, came something called primitive collections. So primitive collections is out-of-the-box built-in support for serializing using JSON. So what is a primitive type? A primitive type is a simple scalar value. So here's some examples of a primitive collections. An EF core can map any E enumerable of T property where T is a primitive type to a JSON column in the database. And this is done by convention, so the list needs to be public, and it needs a getter and a setter. Uh, as you might notice, the URI class is, is not a primitive type, but EF core ships with some built-in converters, so uh, it can be treated as a primitive type. So what you get is that your collection is kind of being treated as a table without the overhead of actually creating that table. And if you store a couple of phone numbers uh, in your table, they will look like this. So as you can see, it's just a, a plain uh, JSON array. So how do we query these primitive collections? Well, it's uh, nothing special, really. You can just use link, as you would do for anything else. Here's an example where I, I retrieve some persons with a specific phone number. What is uh, kind of interesting is the SQL that's been generated from this uh, basic link query. So the SQL will look like this. And there's two things to notice here. One is that it's using the OpenJSON built-in mechanisms of SQL Server. But it's also passing in the phone number as a parameter. And that is a good thing, because SQL Server caches all query plans. So if you were to have the phone number as a value, then you would need to cache a query plan for each unique phone number. But doing, doing it this way with a parameter, you only need to cache one query plan, and it will work for every phone number. So uh, I wanted to show something from my current project. Uh, as I said, I work as a consultant. And right now, I'm at this bank uh, building a, a case handling system. So a, a very uh, demo-friendly, simplified version of a case uh, could look something like this. And I use some primitive collections on, on the case. For instance, I have a collection of completed steps because a case uh, needs to go through different steps and it, not uh, in a specific order. So I need to show in the UI which steps have been completed. So for that purpose, it's uh, really nice to just create a, a primitive collection. And here I use uh, enum, which also will work because it's basically an int. Uh, and I don't need to do any joins uh, or whatnot uh, to retrieve these steps. So what, what about non-primitive types? Uh, 
EF Core 8 also shipped with another thing called uh, another feature called complex types. And what is a complex type? Objects saved to the database uh, can mainly be split into three categories. Uh, primitive types, as I just mentioned. Then uh, you have entity types, which, are, uh, which is a structure with an identity and then multiple values. So basically a table with a primary key and some columns. But then you have something, uh, then you have the complex type. And one example uh, of a complex type can be an address where you have a street name, a street number, uh, a zip code and a country code, but no identity. So uh, before uh, EF Core 8, there was really no good way of mapping this. Uh, you could use something called own types, but they are intended to be used for entity types. So it's not really the intended fit, but it will, it will work. Uh, so I'm going to show how to add a complex type to my case class. So I create uh, something called an approval, uh, which has two members and a unique value uh, for the uh, called an approval stamp and just the time for the approval. And I don't need to know uh, which person did the approval because it's more of a collective effort in this case. Uh, so I just need these. So I add the approval and I name it approval, which is important uh, to the case class like this. And then I want to configure it uh, to be a complex uh, type. So I, I specify that approval is a complex property in my configuration. So when I run my migrations and I update the database, I will have two new columns in my table. And as you can see, uh, both members of the approval record is being mapped to two separate columns and prefixed with approval. So this is the only way to map a complex type in EF Core 8. And uh, according to the documentation, there is no intention uh, to letting you be able to map this to a separate table. But they do want uh, to be able uh, to enable you to, to map it to a JSON column. And I think this is a really perfect fit for a JSON column. Because uh, if, if it was an address, it would be uh, more members, and then it would be a bit strange to have all these columns with the prefix. I would rather have it in one JSON column. So if you go to the GitHub page for EF Core 8, there is a list of the most voted issues. And the by far most voted issue is the one uh, concerning mapping a complex type to a JSON column. So I think that's uh, um, is coming in the near future. future. Uh, but uh, there are, uh, as far as I know, only five Microsoft employees working on the EF Core team. So I think they have their hands full, but hopefully soon. So back to my case handling system. If I had gone with the kind of the traditional approach, adding tables for each uh, list, then I would have ended up with something like this. Uh, one table for each uh, thing and lots of joins and includes to retrieve my data. With the more kind of JSON-based uh, approach, I'm still, uh, I only have st still only this case table. Um, and as long as it doesn't get too bloated, I'm really happy with that because no joins means that um, it's faster to retrieve the, the data. Uh, I only need to look up the primary key and then I have uh, all the stuff I want. And uh, the code gets uh, cleaner because you don't need the big list of includes and you don't need to forget to add uh, includes. And also in, in this system, cases is really a natural aggregate route and uh, it makes sense to load related data into the cases object anyway. So it seems to me that the EF Core team is moving towards extended use of JSON. And that means uh, that we're moving towards a more hybrid between traditional table-heavy relationships and a more pragmatic column-based uh, storage based on principles from key value and document databases. And these are powerful techniques uh, when you learn to master them. So less tables. Uh, means a cleaner solution and a more understandable solution. And then I think that uh, equals a better solution. 
So I encourage you all to check out the newest features of EF Core 8 and to join the Jason column revolution in life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>